Even before Russia invaded Ukraine, on February 24, Cogent Communications CEO Dave Schaefer knew he had big problems. Schaefer's company, which runs a big chunk of the internet backbone and sells access to it, had watched Russia's military intelligence use the internet to launch online attacks. The company determined that some of those attacks had traveled over Cogent's system. Now he was worried about more serious attacks that could target Ukraine, the US, and the internet overall. He fretted that Cogent's network could be a conduit for those attacks. So after several days of discussion, Schaefer made a decision, Cogent would block Russian customers' connections to the outside internet on March 4. Skarheffer said in an interview, My biggest fear was that our network could be subverted and used for offensive purposes. Cogent's decision was a remarkable step in the networking industry, whose companies pride themselves on the breadth, speed and reliability of their services. It was particularly important because Cogent is a giant, carrying about a quarter of the Internet's traffic. Its fiber-optic cable network stretches 100,000 miles and touches 51 countries. In Russia alone, the company's services link the country's carriers to more than 7,500 other networks, operated by Internet service providers, universities, governments and companies. Unplugging Russia is a big moment in the history of the Internet. Generally, the Internet has crept ever deeper into our lives, letting us check the weather in Bangkok, or rent a car in Corsica. Isolating Russia, a development that's both being imposed on the country, and that it's imposing on itself, raises risks that the global Internet will fragment into a splinter net of regionally different networks. So far, content blocking through China's Great Firewall is the biggest step a large country has taken away from the ordinary global Internet. Cogent's action isn't the only factor curtailing Russia's online presence. A host of companies headquartered in the West have made it difficult for Russians to use their services. YouTube, for example, cut off ad revenue for Russian publishers. Apple and Microsoft halted product sales, and Adobe shut down its cloud-based services for creative pros and advertisers. Another international network provider, Lumen Technologies, ended its operations in Russia a few days after Cogent. Russia also has taken actions that curtail the Internet for its citizens. The government blocked Facebook, which could help Russians hear views independent from state-run media's descriptions of the invasion. It plans to cut off Instagram on March 14. Twitter embraced the censorship evading Tor technology after Russia moved to block the service. Finally, Schaefer and his team decided, protecting the Internet overall is more important than protecting Russians' online experience. Schaefer acknowledges, cutting off Russia sets a bad precedent in that you don't want to splinter the Internet. But it's a bad precedent to send your tanks in someone else's country and then threaten to wipe them out with a cyber attack. So guys, what do you think of this whole situation? Share your thoughts down in the comments section and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to get instant video notification. So guys that's it for now, see you in the next video.